Does Beck have a surfboard? And is Scott Domino a bad influence? And what is a good name for a baby these days? This is Gallery Church Online. Welcome to Gallery Church this week. I'm so glad you're here with us. And I'm praying right now that God would bless you right where you are. Over the next 30 minutes or so, I pray that something that's said, a moment in the worship, maybe a sense of his love, a wonderful falling of his peace in your life, I just pray that you would know the goodness of God today. You know, you are unique. You are valuable. There's no one else on earth like you. God made you and he loves you. So what? You haven't got all the answers. Right here, right now at Gallery Church, you are accepted and valued. You are unique, complex, beautiful, valuable. I made you different out of 7,787,200,861 people on planet Earth right now, no one is the same as you. I created you, I gave you breath, I formed your being, and each day I give you life, and I love you, but a divide came between us, and you turned your back and went your own way. You tried life without me, and it's slowly killing you. You know there's more. Again and again you try to find it, sipping from the empty cup of sin, but nothing quenches the deep down thirst. But this is not your story. I made you for more, for life with me in full bloom. So I came to earth to live as you do. I felt your fragility, the problem of pain, the tearing of temptation, but I did not give in. And even though I authored life itself, I chose death. I took your sin, the weight, the cost, and it killed me. It killed me instead of you. That's what I wanted. And I did it because I love you. I laid down my life. I knew I could take it back. I'm alive. I am Jesus. In a world full of shortcuts, I am the way. In a world full of lies, I am the truth. And in a world full of death, I am the life. I died and came back to life so that I could give you a clean slate. If you believe that I did that for you, my life is yours. Will you take it? Well, today we are blessed with another great pastor bringing us the word. Pastor Pete Wright from Springs Church in Gornal this week. Last week, Pastor Andy, and this week, Pastor Pete. Becky and Lizzie lead us in some excellent worship. But first at Gallery Church... Everybody's got it in their week. You know, the bit of the week where you tell a joke and a shark judges it. It's classic, everyone's got that, surely. Okay, who have we got this week? Hayden. Now when Jesus stands on a river, would he stand still or would he ride down it like a conveyor belt? <laughs> what did the dog say to the tree? Bark. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a sheepdog with a daffodil. A cauliflower! <laughs> yes! Dermot loves it! I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm just getting something here on the feed. It's about the name... the name Gary. <laughs> What's that all about, guys? <laughs> Imagine a baby called Gary White. Gary White. Oh, baby! Anyway. Okay, who's next? It's Josh and Beth. Hey, Pat. If you think swimming with dolphins is expensive, you should try swimming with sharks. It'll cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> <laughs> what did the ocean say to the beach? And nothing. It just waved. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Amazing so far. We're really making Dermot happy today with these amazing jokes. All right, who is next? Ah, oh, look, it's Chris and Louise. So, uh, Dermot, um, you know, poo jokes aren't my favourite, but they're a, uh, they're a solid number two. <laughs> and here's Louise from a couple of weeks ago. You remember her? Let's see if we can make it a full house. Hey Dermot, did you hear about the Tibetan monk who saw the face of Jesus on his toast? He looked at it, sat back inside and said, I can't believe it's not Buddha. Oh, I'm so sorry. Who knows what he's going to laugh at? and what he isn't gonna laugh at, who knows? You know, I don't know what's got into him recently, to be honest, he's done one gig, and now he's a world expert. You know what Pastor Rachel is saying? She thinks that Scott Domino is a bad influence on him. I'm not sure, but uh, there may be some truth in that. Anyway, let me point us today, the Good Ship Gallery Church, towards some positive influences, the GC worship team, and here's Beck and Lizzie to lead us this morning. Good morning, church. As you can see, there is not a surfboard in sight. Unfortunately for you, but definitely fortunate for me. I say that because a few weeks ago, we had a beautiful worship song sung to us called Loyal Love by the C3NYC guys. I did not want to let another week go by without me and the beautiful Lizzie doing this for you within our own worship session. The words are so beautiful. And it talks about how our father goes after the one and how that is something that is so important to him. So find yourself some space. Let our Father's love wash over you. Put your hands up, put your hands out and have the most amazing time in his presence. Thank you, Lord. If I fall again The prize I'm running after If I live into my future Won't you go and show me who I am and who you are who you are If I get lost I'm never too far gone You leave the rest to go after the one won't you come and show me who I am and who you are, who you are, your love, your love, leads me to repentance, reminds me what my name that I run to an endless search and rescue and I'm coming back to my senses back to your presence and your love your love and I'm coming back to my senses back to your presence and your love your Every time that I call you answer And in every battle you are my protector To light the way to show me who I am And who you are that I run to an endless search and rescue and I'm coming back to my senses back to your presence and your love your love and I'm coming back to my senses back to your presence 
We live to worship you, Lord. We love to worship you, Lord. We love your presence with us. I pray for a fresh touch of heaven for all of us now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you into our lives. Amen. Well, now it's time for the word today and here to deliver it to us, I'm so pleased to say we have a good friend, a great man, a fantastic church planter and a man who lives to worship God. This person, this man, this hero has definitely won the lockdown hair situation and you may know him as Judah Harris's uncle. It's Pastor Pete Wright. Well, good morning, Gallery Church. It's so good to be with you this morning. Uh, my name is Pete Wright, and I'm one of the pastors of Springs Church in Gornal, which is in the black country uh, for you city uh, dwellers. Um, that's a little bit over to the left on the map. And uh, Pastor Andy and uh, Pastor Rachel, thank you for inviting me to bring this morning's message. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Andy and Rachel and myself and my uh, wife, Rachel, we go back a long, 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 long way. I'm talking decades and decades. And Rachel was uh, the most incredible youth pastor to me uh, in my teens, uh, all the way up to my early 20s. Uh, I served on team with her and I just owe so much to her leadership and to her believing in me uh, and to the gutsy leadership that she showed uh, as a youth pastor for us uh, some years ago now. And uh, to Pastor Andy, my gosh, love you so much, mate. And uh, you were one of the best men at my, at my wedding and uh, I'm so inspired by you constantly, bro. And so thank you so much for inviting me today. And uh, Gallery, um, you know, I reckon that our life's experiences, the way that we, uh, the way that we uh, uh, filter what happens to us in life is, is often by the way that we frame things, wouldn't you agree? And uh, in our church at Springs Church since January, we've been using this phrase. And the phrase is, live life framed by faith. Live life framed by faith. Now, you're gallery church, okay? So you get the picture analogy. I'm pretty sure Gallery Church likes the idea of living life framed by faith. And you know, uh, a frame has two primary, uh, primary, primary functions. One is to, uh, is to uh, present and the other is to protect. And uh, I want to say again right now, let faith in this season be your frame. Let faith frame your experience of the now and let, you, uh, let faith frame the experience of your future. Let faith in the Father, let faith in, in Jesus, let confident expectation of the Holy Spirit continue to present you beautifully before God and before people. Why don't you let faith in the Father, certain hope in Jesus, confident expectation of the Holy Spirit protect your body, your mind, your heart and your soul. <laughs> so much of life and what we make of it is determined by how we frame it. Let's live framed by faith. Do you know why? Because faith knows that God is in the center of the storm. Faith knows that the battle belongs to the Lord. Faith knows that God will bring you through to the other side. Faith knows that the Holy Spirit will bring you counsel and wisdom and guidance. Faith knows that Jesus will never, ever fail you. Faith knows that there are good, these are the good old days, but indeed the best is yet to come as well. So live life framed by faith. Uh, like you guys, I know you've been enjoying studying uh, from the Old Testament just recently, and uh, I've been going back to the Old Testament myself in the last few months. And um, in the Old Testament book of Exodus, the second book in the Bible, you, you'll read how uh, by faith in God, Moses, this nervous liberator, um, rescues the whole Israelite nation out of Egypt, out of slavery, and, uh, and onwards towards the promised land that God had promised to his forefather, Abraham. It's an amazing story. And then go forward two books to the book of Numbers. You know, Numbers records the situations and the circumstances of the journey out of Egypt and through the wilderness time. That kind of no man's land that came before reaching the promised land. In Numbers chapter 1, uh, we see how God has very, very specific instructions to Moses about how to organize the community of faith, how to organize the people of God as they're on the move uh, through the wilderness. And then also, he, he has this really, really special arrangement of how the people should camp when they are still on the journey. And uh, it's quite fascinating. Um, you see, uh, what, what God instructs Moses to do is this. He says, right, I want all the tribes of Israel to be camped around in this really wide, massive circle. 
And then in the middle, he says, I want the tabernacle, otherwise known as the, 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 the tent of meeting. Uh, because in the tent of meeting was a, a smaller room still called the Holy of Holies. And it was in this room, right in the center, that God, uh, uh, his manifest presence, dwelt amongst the people. And so you've got the tribes of Israel camped around in a big circle. And then right in the center of the community is the presence of God. God is so specific. He's got a reason for everything. Nothing is by accident. Everyone in the community had their specific place and role and purpose. Gosh, that's a, that's a picture for the church, right? You know, we all are ministers. We all have our role to play. We all have our place in this community. And so you've got this wide circle. You've got this tabernacle, this tent of meeting where the presence of God is. But then in Numbers chapter 2, we find that there's one tribe that has a really special position when compared with the position of all the other tribes. We see how the tribe of Levi were consecrated special to God. In other words, set apart wholly for a special reason within this community. In Numbers chapter 3, verse 5 to 7, it says this. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and set them before Aaron the priest that they may minister to him. They shall keep God over him and over the whole congregation before the tent of meeting as they minister at the tabernacle. You see, the tribe of Levi are especially positioned immediately uh, around that tent of meeting. So you've got that wide circle. You've got the presence of God right in the center. But the tribe of Levi are instructed by God to camp the closest to the presence of God out of the whole community. It was only one tribe, one family group were allowed to camp this close to the presence of God, and it was the tribe of Levi. And so as I'm reading Numbers, I'm kind of wondering, well, my goodness, like, what was it about this tribe that got them so close to the presence of God? What was it about this tribe that made them consecrated to this specific purpose? I mean, surely everyone's equal in, in, in the family of God. So what, what was it about this particular tribe? Well, we have to rewind, you see, now to find out. We have to rewind to Exodus, uh, two books before, and to chapter 32 of that book. You see, what we find is in chapter 32 of Exodus, the people of Israel have been taken out of captivity, uh, led by Moses, uh, an incredible set, set of circumstances that have brought them their freedom. And then just at the start of their journey into the wilderness, we find Moses goes up, to, it goes up in the mountains and, uh, and he has time with God and he's alone with God. And while he's there, God is speaking so powerfully to Moses. He's teaching Moses all sorts of things about the way that he should lead the people, about what he should teach the people and how they should live. And, but he's actually gone for quite a while. And, uh, you know, whilst their leader is physically in the camp, the people of God are really confident. They're not asking any questions about where they're going or what's going to happen. They're confident because their leader is right in front of them. But, but when he's not around, when Moses is up in the mountains for quite a while, <laughs> they start to fall apart. And they start to fall back into the patterns of worship and idolatry that had punctuated their time when they were experiencing life as slaves. The people in their wilderness experience started to lose confidence in the God that had saved them. They collected gold and they then melted it down and they made for themselves an idol to worship. A golden calf, you might have heard the story. The people in their wilderness experience, they literally end up boiling down the supernatural to something as insignificant as a golden baby cow. <laughs> In their newfound freedom, the people had not yet realized that it's not us who fashion God in an image that we understand, but it is in fact up to God to fashion in us who he wants us to be. Perhaps recently you've felt that your faith uh, has fallen apart a little. Perhaps recently you've fallen back into old patterns and behavior that you'd already been saved from. Maybe there have been time, uh, times when you've lost confidence in God. Maybe you've known Jesus for a while, but you've looked to fashion your faith journey and crowbar Jesus into how you think, think, how you think things should go. Not realizing, to a greater measure, that it is actually God who invites you into his designs. <laughs> at long last, Moses comes back down the mountain, but what he sees is just not what he left. And uh, uh, he comes back and the people of God, they're in complete and utter disarray. They've even abandoned the God that actually brought them out of slavery. Madness. 
In Exodus 32, chapter, uh, in Exodus chapter 32, verse 26, it says this. It says, it says, Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side here? Come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered around him. Wow. Didn't mention any other tribe. The sons of Levi gathered around him. You see, while everyone else was flipping out and crafting for themselves a quick fix God, the Levites held fast to the one true God who had brought them out of slavery. While everyone was quick to abandon Almighty God, the Levites were having none of that. The tribe of Levi were not prepared to run out on mighty God for some quick fix solution baby cow idol God. <laughs> the tribe of Levi, they, they, they held fast to the unseen, the unchanging, the immovable God of heaven. Church, can I encourage you right now to choose God again? The world might be in a flap right now and we might be tempted to create for ourselves and craft for ourselves quick fix uh, gods. But no, let's be people who choose God. Do you know the name Levi? It means this in Hebrew. It means attached. And what I love about that fact is this, that, that the people of Levi, the tribe of Levi, they, they stayed attached to the God who set them free. You know, Almighty God had led them here and Almighty God was going to lead them into the promised land. They were committed to staying attached to God. Listen, Exodus 32, 29, Moses says to the Levites who gathered around him, the ones who were choosing God, he said, today you have been ordained for the service of the Lord, each one at a cost of his son and of his brother, so that he, that's God, might bestow a blessing upon you this day. You see, they're choosing God, they're going against the grain of their wider community, caused God to bestow a blessing on their tribe, not just on that day, but for all the days ahead. Who they were, now catch this with your gallery church, who they were in that moment determined their position in the movement. Who they were in that moment, their choosing God in that moment determined their position in the movement of God. How amazing is that? You know, while the world is going one way, will you still say today that I am on the Lord's side? Will the God that you choose in this moment will dictate your position in the movement. If we are people who choose Jesus Christ today, we can be assured that he has position for us in his kingdom. How good is that? Who you choose in the moment will determine the movement of God within you and your position in the movement that you are a part of. You see, the tribe of Levi, they chose Almighty God to frame their experience of coming out of captivity. The tribe of Levi, they chose the great I Am who would um, frame their experience through their wilderness. The tribe of Levi would be positioned so close to the presence of God in the days ahead. Do you remember when they camped, there was a big circle of all the tribes, of all the community, but at the heart of the community is the presence of God. But the closest to the presence of God through that wilderness time and in the promised land were the Levites who made a choice in a moment. In Gallery Church, I want to encourage you today to make the choice in this moment to choose God. To remain living, framed by faith, so that today can be different, but also your tomorrow can be close to his presence. I hope that makes sense this morning. Can I encourage you, Gallery Church, not to become detached from God in this season, but like the Levites, stay attached, stay true to who you are. In this kind of wilderness that we're in, Hold on to God who is faithful. As you choose to remain attached, as you choose to draw near to God, the word of God promises that he draws near to you. Do you know, I just want to encourage you right now. You might have been a Christian for five minutes or 50 years, I don't know, but every time you refuse to compromise and give in to temptation, God draws near to you. Wow. He'll see you out of slavery. He'll see you through your wilderness. And he will establish you close to his presence in the day of his promise. Gallery Church, let me pray for you. 
Perhaps you've, uh, you've, you've never been to church before. Perhaps you've never heard about Jesus Christ before. But I just want to encourage you today that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same God that led the people of Israel through the wilderness is the same God that will lead you through this wilderness. So why don't you ask him uh, to come into your life right now? Why don't you ask him, take a chance on him, and ask his forgiveness for, for sin? Turn your back on gods that have robbed your attention away from the one true God and and start a journey of faith with him today. Father, I pray for these incredible uh, brothers and sisters of Gallery Church. Father, I pray that in this season we would defiantly uh, go against the grain, against the culture of our day, and we would choose you. We would not despair, but we would live framed by faith. God, I pray that you would, uh, by your Holy Spirit, let us know that your presence is so close right now. And in the days ahead, Jesus, we pray that your presence would lead us forward more than ever. In your holy name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Bless your gallery, church. Bless your gallery, church. Love you. See you soon. Wow. Thank you, God, for your word to us today. Attached to God. Your decisions now dictate your positions later. So good, Pete. Thank you. You know, it's never too late to start making good decisions and to start building towards your future. God is able to restore lost years, rebuild ruined cities, and he can definitely help us in our lives in these days. Why not make a decision today to follow Jesus, to acknowledge the creator of life. Make space in your life for the Holy Spirit to come in now. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you have made a way for us to walk with our loving Heavenly Father. I open my life up to your spirit, to minister to me and to lead me as I follow your ways. Amen. What a brilliant Sunday. Thank you so much to everyone who is part of keeping Church Sundays happening and doing it so well in these online days. Shout out to Beck and the worship team for all they've done over this year. To Jen, Jen, to Chris Davis, his amazing videos and audio skills. James White for making it all happen. The filming and the production team, so good. We are so grateful. A massive thanks to Pastor Pete, from Springs Church, that message today. I really enjoyed that ministry today, so big shout out and blessings to you guys as you carry on your journey planting that church. 6.30 tomorrow morning, we have our Battlefront morning prayer meeting. Decide, <laughs> decide now to get your holy self along to that. We also have dinners this week on Wednesday. Look after your soul and get yourself into community. Next week, we're starting our two week Easter series, which is called From Darkness Into Light. Ooh, lovely. But until then, stay safe and we'll see you online very soon. Now, when Jesus stands on a river, would he stand still or we run? Okay, so I put a potato in the microwave and I put it on the pizza setting and everything was going fine until I opened the door and found out it was still a potato. So Louis, have you seen the film Constipation? No. Uh, well, I'm not surprised. It won't be out for a while. <laughs> Supremely good, that, I thought. That was much better. You better laugh. <laughs> or we're making sharpened chips. <laughs>